What's up, everybody? I'm Mark DeMeo. I'm here with my co-host in all things law enforcement, Bill Cannon. What up? And welcome to Police Off the Cuff. <laughs> Today, we have our guest here. Um, he's a retired NYPD... Detective? Detective? <laughs> yes. First grade detective. <laughs> Worked in Brooklyn North Homicide. Mike, South. South. Brooklyn South Homicide. Mike Heinrich, right? Heinrichs. Heinrichs. Nobody spelled it right. It's hard to spell his name. That's one of them. You gave me the you gave me the wrong spelling. So the whole week I'm looking, trying to find, uh, do my background research on you. Okay. And uh, you don't even have a Facebook page, which I bet you do. But I did put the. Do you have a Facebook page? Uh, not under my real name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? I well, I, well I'm, I'm in now the you're I'm in entertainment you, business. <laughs> now you're just I a civilian. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but there's a lot of people that uh, that stayed out of the cut. I always admired that. I remember, like early on, I, w I would always, I would say, say, "You just find me on Facebook." Oh, I don't use that. I'm like, "What the hell's the matter with you, bro? <laughs> what you, what's wrong? What did you do? What did you do to people that you can't get on Facebook, right?" And then you realize years later, "Wow, that was a smart move." Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you do have a page, but you keep it under a secret name. No, um, no, I'm only kidding. I just don't use that stuff. I'm not a computer guy. Uh huh. I, you know, I'm like an old-fashioned guy, you know. So like did you have that. someone do your computer checks when you were on the job? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> One of those guys. Hey, could you run this for me? <laughs> run that. No, uh, what, so when the, when the changes were coming with the uh, the iPhones, did you give it a shot and then say, let me go back? Or you just never were interested in it? No, nah, I, I, I sort of resisted and fought back with it. I waited to the last uh, possible moment to get involved in that. I was the last guy in the squad to have a typewriter. Yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, that's why I was. My that, point was going. Never got to, it. Never got an automatic. You know, um, <laughs> you I wish, have a flip phone. You had you the know. 38 <laughs> when when they were laying down lead in Brooklyn North. Yes. And you you still had a 38. Brooklyn South. Brooklyn South. Why do we keep saying North? Yeah. Brooklyn South. What's more, what's Tall busier? Tales, the south or the short north? Buildings. What's busier, the south or the north of Brooklyn? Uh, the north has uh, always been busier. But you got your. What share is of it? Lead. What, break it down for us. So the 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 south covers what commands? Uh, the south is uh, six zero. Coney Island, 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", 6'6", 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", 7'0", 7'1", 7'6", 7'8". Well, that's a, that sounds like all of Brooklyn. <laughs> There's more? <laughs> well, There's more it's half of Brooklyn, you know? But yeah, oh, no, I th well, you know, the city's changed. Oh, Brooklyn's uh, changed, so. Um, so know. when we went to um, the DD5 system is when we started putting it into computers, and that became a big problem for a lot of squad guys who were used to typing all the time, and now you had to show them how to use a computer. Was that a problem for you? Yes, it was. Uh, so you, so and and then when you were in a, uh, also when you were in the squad, the homicide squad, I'm sure there was times that a computer doing a background check on a computer, like you know, looking up somebody else's Facebook, must have been tough too, right? But no, gotta, I mean I could navigate through it. Okay. It wasn't like I was, you know, I couldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. But you know, when you think and about what an antiquated system that was, remember the carbons. Right, <laughs> it was like an yeah, eight but you page. know what though? But, is, uh, we're gonna jump the gun here, but you were you were in the homicide squad, right? Well, you know what? When I when I first got in the squad, we were you know basically taught those mm -hmm. fives, the DD fives are for you. Uh -huh. They're not for somebody's entertainment. You know, a defense <laughs> attorney, some boss to sit down right, and right. read when he's home <laughs> and stuff like that. They're yours, in your words, for you. For our, for I, our audience, could we just tell them a DD five is a complaint follow up? Every time a detective speaks to someone. They have to memorialize what they spoke about on what's known as a DD-5, which is a complaint follow-up. And right. a case becomes like a movie script, becomes like a big story, right? right. I love that. Can you say that again? Your, your case is for you? Well, it's the DD-5s. Not for entertainment, right? They know, they, but they, that's what they, they became. they became, right? They became yeah. like Bosses wanted like to novels. read them, and everybody got to read them, and they interpret them their own way. And they, you know, the defense attorneys obviously would turn them over, but what happened was is that... Guys started doing DD fives to appease what the bosses wanted to hear, and mm -hmm. what was supposed to be on the DD five, or not supposed to be on the DD five, wound up in the wrong spot, and uh, it wasn't yours anymore. In other words, you had to share that with interview, everyone. whatever happened during mm -hmm. an interview, and put down what they wanted, and you know, it created that uh, was issues. part of the Comstat monster. Yes, they they didn't care if you went to a guy and you knocked on the guy's door and he says, "I want a lawyer." You know, put it down on a DD-5, case closed, and go home. Right, right. That was their thing. Well, wait a minute. You know, there was ways that you dealt with things like that. And um, 
certain things, uh, you know, and then a lot of things too they want you to do was like negative fives. If you went to somebody's house and they weren't there, do you have to do a DD5 mm -hmm. that it went there and he wasn't around? Mm -hmm. We were so busy running around with all this stuff and now you want to do DD5s, put them in the computer so some boss can say, well, they went to his house five times. Well, that's right. just, to, right. just to make sure you know? that you're working on your case because a lot of times you have people that <laughs> had cases they never, they updated. But yeah. uh, well, listen, uh, let's go back, back to the beginning. Where are you from? I'm from Long Island. You grew up in or Long East Island? Cupcake, as uh, yeah. well, the That's tough the guys say. the police term, yeah. yeah. What year did you come on? I came on in uh, 1984. All righty. And where was the first command that you worked in? Um, I went to NSU 14, you know, the training unit that was in the 7-9 in Brooklyn. So you were in Brooklyn your whole career then? Um, yes. I went from the 7-9 to the 6-9 for a little bit, and then I got into the 6-7. I mean, it, it's not a bad commute because... What part of Long Island were you in? It's uh, Merrick. It's uh, Nassau County, yeah, straight, South Shore. Yeah. It's not so you, bad. Had to, you had to deal with the, uh, what would you take? You uh, the, the belt, the belt, the belt, uh, uh, Linda Boulevard, time. you know. Yeah, that belt is a nightmare. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, uh, depending on what time of day you use it. Right. So um, were you a big collar guy in the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm once I, you know, the 6-9, I started a little slow. It was a slow command. Uh -huh. um, you know, I wanted to work at a busy command. Um, and. So I eventually got my way to the six seven, in sort of a strange way or a funny way. What was that? Um, well, you know, first I, I had wanted to go to the seven seven out of, out uh, of stupidity. <laughs> out of stupidity. Well, I would, well, maybe Who stupidity. Fuck, why would anybody <laughs> want to go to? Seven, That's what everybody seven. said in nineteen eighty four. I had the big so, corruption scandal back well, then, right? Well, we I didn't know that at the time, although. <laughs> A friend of a friend says, hey, go over to the liquor store on Fulton Street and talk to a guy there. He's a friend of mine. He'll help you out. So I went there, and I told the guy, and he's like, where do you want to go? And I said, uh, I want to go to the 7-7. And he says, you don't want to go there. <laughs> I said, no, I want to go there. No, you don't want to go there. All right. So uh, he goes, listen, find out where, wherever you go. If you don't like it, call me. I'll work it out. I didn't know. I went to the 6-9. You know, and then a short time later, I found out why he didn't want me to go to the 7-7. You know, what the whole... Uh, scandal. Scandal yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but also, uh, too, yeah, I mean, you're jumping right into the fire, too, with or without the scandal back then. Right, well, you that know... That was a big... No, was, I know, I know. But I, you know, so I wound up in the 6 9 I was looking up... I was to, kidding. I mean, if yeah. you want to work, that's where you want to go. Yeah, I was young. I loved this kind of stuff. It's what I wanted to do. So, you know, but once I got to, uh, you know, the 6 9 I was hearing the 6 7 jump off the radio, and the 6 9 really wasn't for me, and... Uh, I, I was lucky enough to hook up with a, with an old time, and it was a real you know street cop, and wanted to work, so he really formed me and helped me mm -hmm. out. Um, so, um, um, well, this it so was the seven seven had a corruption scandal back in right. what was it the late eighties? Well, that's Michael Dow, yeah. right? No, that was no, the seven five. No. Oh, the seven this seven was before, I went too, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say Dow. it's nineteen eighty five, maybe yeah. nineteen eighty six, even. So, well, what um, they had a nickname for those guys. Like, what was it called? Buddy like, Boys. The Buddy, Buddy Boys. Buddy Boys. That's yeah, they right. had a book called Buddy Boys. That's yes, right. yes. That's I read that book. Oh, yeah, I had, I had the book. I never want to say I read a book. That's not fair. <laughs> so anyhow, after I was in the six nine, they started launching. Guys, they started moving guys from commands and putting them into the seven seven. So you got I, your wish. Uh, well, no, I didn't. What happened was, is a couple guys went from the six nine and they went kicking and screaming, you know, and. I did a mutual with them, and it got squashed in the end. Oh, so, so you were, you made one guy really, really happy for a minute, and then it got squashed. Right. So and he still got screwed. I, I kept, <laughs> I kept, you know, I kept trying to work things out. I went to the six seven, then I put a mutual up on the board, and um, a cop uh, responded to me, and we went to do the mutual, and everything was good until uh, my commanding officer, the six nine, real, realized it was a female. And uh, he wasn't a fan of female police officers, and uh, off wow. he went. So it was not an even trade. Of, they wanted to play a name no. later. And he w he went off on me, you yeah. know, and s threw me out of the office and, and said, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll stay here forever. About 20 minutes later, I get a 10 2 fourth with to the CEO. He brings me in the office. I'm like, now what? And he said, listen, uh, I'm sorry I blew up at you. Pour the glass, reach out a glass. He says, you'll be in the 6-7 tomorrow. Wow. Good luck and stay safe. Well, and that was what? it. So that's how I got to the 6-7. How, how did he find religion? 
That's a gentlemanly um, thing to do. I don't know. Yeah, no, he was a good guy, and you know, he some thought about blow it. Up. I, well, I, I understand. Have a I have to blow up. Too. No, I understand. I just uh, so that's how I wound up in the six seven, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. I'm not saying it was right that he wanted the female officer. I'm just no, saying no, if you no, blow he, up on somebody, then he was you an old school guy, an old timer. And yeah, was, you're wrong. Was, Apologize. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. No. So that was that. And so you wind up then you go to the six seven and st- things are rocking there. Yeah, you're things happy are now? things are great. Great. I mean, some of the I still keep in touch with all the guys. See them all the time. We do a reunion every six months. We had a real tight crew. And you were on real, patrol at this point. I was on patrol. Yeah. And what did um, you do? You, uh, you went to the anti-crime, then into the squad? Is that the route you took? Yeah, anti-crime, and then into um, the precinct squad. So now you're in the 6-7 squad. Right. What kind of kid? Are there a lot of homicides in the 6-7? Um, what, what kind of Are you in the RIP? I'm what, in the RIP. So I, you're I doing robberies. RIP. You're investigating I'm robberies? i doing robberies. And, and burglaries, uh, too? Uh, no, we just did strictly robberies. We had we had plenty. The, my first year there, we had like over three thousand robberies. Wow! Wow! Plan, <laughs> you know, Where's well, the give six, us seven? the yeah. Six seven is uh, well, they call it East Flatbush. It's um, it's I don't know. It's I guess it's almost dead center in Brooklyn, oh, just yeah. east of Brownsville. The north end of the precinct was they would call it Brownsville and would border uh, Flatbush. You know, Flatbush Avenue, yeah. Church Avenue, Utica Avenue. And what's and the every, racial and ethnic makeup of that precinct? Um, it's it's a, a black community, mostly from the Caribbean. Jamaican, Haitian, uh, Guyanese, Trini, Trinis, and pop, stuff. Pop, pop, pop! <laughs> yeah, yeah, had a lot of that. <laughs> pop, pop, pop! A lot of that. A lot of guns, a lot of violence. Well, were, they, were they, the guns back then, were they um, a lot of more carrying them with the wire? They would yeah, wire. it was a little... Uh, they put a piece actually, of wire, right? Actually, somebody, a guy had come into the academy and showed showed us that, like the training. And you know all the stuff you get in the academy. I yeah. thought it was the coolest thing. Right. Now, guys would have the little, you know, they'd break the uh, the coat hanger, put a little thing, put the you know the pipe in and the one in the And that's how pan. the gun would be held right. but in the pants. Well, they right? would wear a belt, but they would wear it up around like, uh, like your nipple line. Wow. And stick the gun in there. So, you know, if you threw a guy a toss... You know, you couldn't you ignore. You couldn't ignore the chest area. Right. You just well, you would always go to the waist first. Right. You know, but um, wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, there was a lot of you know, there was a lot of a uh, lot of you know, a lot of guns, remember a lot of shots. Remember from in the Jamaica academy they said over. they called the gun a puppy man. Right? Yeah, well, they they called it a lot of things. <laughs> you know, depending. I on... I never uh, heard anyone refer to it as. No, a puppy I never heard puppy. I heard career. other things. You know, gat, <laughs> gat, ratchet, right. and yeah. you know, tool and all those things, but. Uh, are there yeah. a lot of robberies? Uh, well, you said 3,000 robberies, but right. uh, is it Jamaican gangs and stuff like that? Um, Caribbean gangs? Um, initially, well, back in the 80s, it was, you know, posses with the drug wars and oh, stuff. Okay, all right. And there was a lot of that. And then later on, it, it transformed to, um, it transformed to like younger street gangs and stuff like well, that. Since you, well, since you've been retired for a while, but our... our um our chief engineer right here on the he's on the ones and twos. His name is Rashad. He's Caribbean. Okay. You recognize him? <laughs> um, no, no, I don't. <laughs> he's got the dreadlocks. If you need him for a lineup, let us uh, know. Listen, Both I used to so fifteen dollars, right? You know what it was, Rashad? It's uh, it's uh, it's fifteen dollars. Guys, sit in the lineup. guys used to say all the time, "Oh, you stop, you know, man, you're stopping me just because I got dreadlocks." I uh-huh. said, "Listen, I've been in Flatbush long enough that I, to know that not every guy with dreadlocks is a bad guy. Uh-huh. So knock it off already." You know what uh-huh. I mean? Uh-huh. So, uh, you know. It's good when you talk to them straight like that. They get it right away. Well, they, you know what it is? Like, especially a lot of those guys were, were different than other types of criminals. They were, they, uh, they demand, not demanded, but they wanted respect. And mm-hmm. we, and they would respect us in return. Wow, even if you were, even if you were a shotter or, a, you know, a Jamaican gangster or whatever. Okay, you said that word a couple of times. Shotter? How do you spell it? Uh, shot. Shot shot yeah. Shot Shata. Yeah, my accent is... It even has uh, a rhythm now. to it, man. It has <laughs> a decade <laughs> rhythm. Shata. <laughs> is that something like a, like a, I guess, a Jamaican it's, gang member? Yeah, it would be like a gun, you know, gun guy, you know. Gunman. Gunman. Yeah. Shata. Shata. Yeah, yeah, he's, so. the, you're gonna, he's the guy who's going to shot you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shata, yeah, he would. He the would. designated shooter. Yeah, yeah, he would. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, that, that um, in New York City, you have the West Indian Parade that goes... When is that for? That's when everybody takes their vacation. It's just like if you're if you're on the job for a minute and you start getting a little seniority, as soon as you get your um, your vacation pick at the beginning of the year, 
you'll look, and the first week you'll always look to take, you'll ask somebody, when is the West Indian Day Parade? <laughs> and then they'll tell you that week in July, and then that'll be your first vacation pick, to pick yeah. if you can grab it on seniority. Was your, well, was your favorite night Jouvert, which uh, is the night before, right? I, well, it is the night before, Juve. Juve. But, you know. Bad French for me. As, but <laughs> back when I was on patrol and we were in the precinct, uh, they just called it murder and mayhem. Murder, murder. And mayhem. There was no church avenue, a church avenue, church there, but there was no actual name to it. It was just the night before Labor Day, and you know the neighborhood would be packed. For, people for our from listeners, all tell tell us how many guns you would pull off the street th th that night. Oh, uh, that night. Yeah, I mean, night between all of us, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. dozens, you know, it would be dozens. You and know. there would be shootings and... Shootings, yeah, shootings. Is that, yeah. A, is that like the day, because uh, the, all the floats that go by and the, just the amount of people, there's like a million people that walk through the thing to take care of your business, your uh, your personal business, your vendettas with somebody? Because it seems like there's always people getting shot during the parade. No, I don't think so. No, like the I, no they would, would, but I think that was more of a... Um, uh, a thing that just happened when you had all the ingredients there. Okay, you know, people like partying, like drinking, people with guns, packed, okay. something happened, somebody gets into a little argument, steps right. on somebody, and now the fuse is lit, and boom, boom, and that. So it wasn't it like goes. a purge, like a day of the year, like, you know what, I'm going to get you back on that day, you'll see. Or you think about There's it. There's probably some it. of that, too. Yeah, I'm sure it happened here and there. I, don't, I can't recall that ever happening, that, 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 you know, my personal experience, that it was, uh, we've had cases, mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of them were just, like I said, a combination of all the ingredients being in one spot. And the running joke it. or the story is that the, the parade keeps going. So you get shot like right in between two floats and the next one will just keep going and then just kind of sort of hop. <laughs> well, and just go over the body and then it just, it's, it's, <laughs> it just keeps yeah, going. It's like anything else. The show must go on. You uh -huh. know? And a lot of times the part, you know, the parade would go and then the float would just go this way and go down into crown Heights or down, you know, wherever. And they would start up another party till they figured out a way to stop, stop the damn thing. And then it would yeah. just go and stop the float and every bunch of people would go there. So there was a lot of what they call jump up parties all over the oh, neighborhood. Oh, wow, there. that's interesting too. It's yeah. tough to contain that, you know? Yeah, so you Because they're supposed know. to be going down Eastern Parkway, right? Yeah, but, and you so know. So they would lose their way. Supposed to, what really happened, you know? But we used to do that with, uh, you know, uh, uh -huh. a half a dozen sector cars. And up between us, the uh -huh. seven one, the seven zero, oh, and seven seven, and we ran Somehow all you night. managed, right? Ran all night, you know, and... Uh, Fortunately, the good people never got to see the police uh, uh -huh. if they needed them because we were running all over the place. But now it's a big detail, the whole police department. Do you, there, do you yeah. remember the, uh, your first homicide investigation? You should just put them on top here. Oh, okay. Right on top. Okay. You remember your the first homicide you caught? The first one I caught, yes. I um, I mean, I had worked on a bunch when I was in the 6 7 rip. Because we no, I'm talking about yours. Mine, yes, I yours, do. You, you're gonna, you caught this. One. Yes, I caught one in the 6 7. On uh, Hi, this one's this one's Heinrichs. He's up next. Yeah, that's how it goes. You know? Yeah, go ahead. What happened? A um, couple of guys um, decided to get into the uh, drug trade, um, and they were in a little bit over their head. And uh, my victim went to his girlfriend and says, "Listen, I need your apartment. I got to do a little deal." When we were down in Florida, I met this Dominican guy, and this is mm. this. The next thing's going to happen. I need you to clear out. Um, and give me the space, uh, you know, I'm going to make a lot of money on this deal. And she uh, agreed, but she also called her other boyfriend and set him up, as the story goes. Wow. So, There's a lot of that going on, man. My 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 two guys, my victim, and then one that got shot and survived, they, you know, they're in the apartment. Buzzer goes off. Wait a minute, wait, I'm confused right now. So okay. the guy that was involved initially in the drug dealer is in the apartment. Right, he comes to the apartment with his guy. Uh, with uh, the and Dominican the guys? Leader. No, no, with his uh, another his guy, partner. His partner. They they wait now. They're waiting for the Dominican guys. Okay, yeah. Now um, the girl leaves, mm -hmm. and whatever ten minutes later, whatever time uh, transpires, buzzer goes off. Oh, come on up. Um, but it's not the guys. The guys looking to do the drug deal. It's her other boyfriend. Yeah, that's it. She called and him, set him he up. He comes up, ties him up, guns the both of them. And this guy, one guy survives, and the other guy goes DOA. How much money was uh, did he take? What, what was how much money was the drug deal? Oh, uh, we, we never know. We don't know. Uh huh. He didn't share all the information with her. She just knew. And uh, um, so what you was solved going this on. case, or what? Yeah, yeah. We actually, um, um, I had a, you know, it's very difficult when you get a case, and um, 
you know, you, you, you sort of like your suspect happens to be a wife or girlfriend or family member of, mm-hmm. of, of the victim. Mm-hmm. You got to tread a little lightly. You just can't go headstrong right, and start, right. you know, jumping right in, accusing people. You got to, you know, you got to lay off and work it. And I was, I was convinced that she was involved. Um, and uh, it just, we hit a dead end. We couldn't prove it. And, and one day, it's like one of those days, you know, they, like they say with all these cases, you're only a phone call away. I'm sitting in the squad. It's late at night. I'm by myself. The phone rings. It's the uh, girl, not the girl who set him up, but her roommate. Mm. Says, listen, I got to talk to you. I, I can't live with this. You know, you know. I, I want to tell you what happened that night. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, where are you? She wouldn't tell me. I said, I got to meet you. Got to meet you. Wouldn't tell me. But found out she worked in Manhattan. And I went there and I waited for her one night. Scooped her up and brought her in. And she gave the whole thing up. And Did then she we get knew- charged with murder too? No, no. The friend? No. Oh, the girlfriend that set him oh, up. The, oh, the girlfriend yeah, that set yeah. him up here, right? Yeah. No? No. What'd she get charged with? Nothing. Nothing. Brooklyn Justice. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, got, you got the collar with the other guy, right? Yeah, he got collared and the other guy, you know, like I said, the one victim survived. And, and, you know, the victim that survived said, listen, when we hit the buzzer, you know, I knew it was her voice on that phone. And I told, you know, my, my buddy that uh, something's not right. She that was, was her voice. Oh, so, calling from outside. So from the, when it hit the buzzer, it wasn't like, you know, come on up. It was huh? like he heard a voice. and uh, Oh, shit. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, yeah, we, had so a guy, we had a guy one time from Brooklyn that was ripping off um, drug locations in Brooklyn. So okay. they invited him to Manhattan to an apartment on East, East 103rd Street. And they tortured him. And they, they cut off his hands. Mm-hmm. Wow. They cut off his head. Mm-hmm. And then they threw him in a duffel bag and they dumped him on 119th Street. Only because they were being pursued. They dumped all this stuff. But wow. that's not a healthy profession, ripping off drug locations. No, no, it's not. He was a Panamanian, too. And the guy who, one of the guys who killed him went back to Panama, and his family killed that guy. Did it, <laughs> so, yeah. exceptional Did it, clearance, they call that, right? Yeah, no, I had a few of them. And in <laughs> Panama, too. Some strange place, Panama. You, you went know. there on a case? No, but uh, we sort of did a Noriega on a guy one time that uh, he killed a... Uh, he killed a kid. This one guy killed a good kid at a party. The kid was a real nice kid. Happened out in seven one, and uh, the the perp was Panamanian. And long story short, we tracked him down to a couple of different places. Wound up in Panama, and I was trying to get this guy back because, the, like I said, he was a nice kid that got killed. It was a it was a nonsense thing. The kid didn't do anything wrong, and the uh, perp was a real shithead. You know, he had taken a dozen or so collars at least at the time. Mm-hmm. So anyhow. Um, wound up trying to get through the State Department. There's no, there's no uh, extradition and all that. Even though he wasn't a, na- a Panamanian national, he was Panamanian. That and uh, so uh, the the feds did me a little favor and says, uh, listen, uh, just to give you a little tip, your guy's going to be on a plane uh, and he's going to land in Miami at two o'clock on Thursday. <laughs> That's great. You might want to be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we did a little light, a uh, little light kidnapping, and he landed in Miami, and off he went. <laughs> Did hey. about twelve years for that murder, and a week later he killed somebody else. Wow! I gotta ask you, uh, what did the, the Dominican guy ever show up for that drug deal? Uh, no, but we, <laughs> we we had some phone records, and they were staying at. Well, it's not there anymore, but there was a, a notorious hotel off of Bell Parkway called the Gateway, mm-hmm. where a lot of shenanigans went on of, of all types, and um, we had some tape and you know phone calls there. We knew we were there and. At some point, you see, like you know, you could, you know, we could see these guys like running out of the hotel and mm-hmm. get to their cars. The parts unknown. We couldn't make out who they were, and I guess they got you know, worried that's a, somehow. That's that a tr- things... Were you ever a transit cop? Uh, no, that's no. a transit expression. Parts unknown. They no? fled to parts oh, unknown. Yeah. I love that. Well, that was also <laughs> they a, always put that a on the sixty-one. What was that they never liked that on the new fives either. <laughs> they didn't want they parts fled unknown. To parts what is that unknown? Mean? What the well, fuck does Bob, that mean? <laughs> who's that wrestler? Remember, he was from parts unknown. <laughs> In this corner, the killer <laughs> from parts unknown. <laughs> <laughs> You got some good police expressions that all, hey, our audience you, might not know it. You know? I got, I got to yeah, mention this. Uh, but anybody ever tell you, you look like Pat Sajak? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm hanging out with Pat Sajak. I thought he looked a little bit like uh, Detective Pat Porteous. Uh, <laughs> Pat Sajak is actually a very clever. He's a comedian. He was a comedian. He was a stand-up. And he oh, writes a lot yet? of clever tweets. Yeah, he's a conservative. He's okay. always po- uh, posting up really funny tweets. Sounds good. So uh, how many homicides did you have to catch, investigate, close out before you actually got picked to be in the homicide squad? 
Um, actually, I didn't. I didn't catch any cases myself when I was in the six seven. But but what happened was is that um, around the mid nineties, after the smoke started to clear from all the you know the murders in the eighties and that, mm-hmm. um, they had a lot of wanted people. Oh. Um, so they put me and a team of guys, and we did uh, you know fugitive uh, apprehension. Yeah, and we did really well. You know, I picked up like. Uh, I think 13 guys in the 11, first 11 months. All, yeah, I was in all the Lawrence the squad, but I remember that fugitive apprehension team. You know, it was good. It was just, We just did the wanted cards, you know, in uh, Brooklyn South, you know, homicide. And mm-hmm. we traveled all over the country, and we grabbed these guys. And it was great. And then, you know, those guys retired. Then, boom, they just shot me into the catching order, and I was there for the next 15 years or so. That's an interesting thing, man. I'm working, it must have felt good, right? Did you have the pinky ring and stuff? You don't wear it no more? Nah. You never got that? He's stuff. more of a nah. street guy. Yeah. Do you know, Mark, he's got, he's got two combat crosses uh-huh. and two medals of valor. That's a very unusual to have two combat crosses. How many EPDs yes. is that? <laughs> uh, we have a running, I don't know. We have a running joke here about uh, the, the, the people that with the... The big rack. The stacked rack. Oh, yeah. And right. a lot of it's just EPDs, and he's supposed to consolidate. Yeah, they got, they got, they got a lot, lot of fluff in there, too. You got so the, you, uh, uh, you had two medals on How do you get a medal on it? What, what's the... Va- valor. Oh, 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 boy, one second. That was The Undertaker. Was it The Undertaker from Parts Unknown? Okay. It was The Undertaker. So how do you get a, the Medal of Valor? How do you get one of those? What do you have to... You got to get shot? Um, No, the Combat Cross you have to get shot for. You don't have to, but it helps. It helps. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> and the Medal yeah. of Valor, you got to shoot somebody? Gotta uh, yeah. yeah. You got to cap usually. somebody? Yeah, yeah. You have to be in a shooting okay. situation where it's... You, you know, you're shooting somebody, somebody's shooting at you. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I forget the terminology. You know, well, you, you uh, got, uh, you took some lead, right? Yes. You got, <laughs> you got, you got shot in the chest, right? Your vest? Uh, no, in, in the back, in the vest, but in the, in the back, oh, in the back shoot. shoulder. You yeah. see that? Detective Pat, where are you? That's a real taking some lead. <laughs> he took some real lead. <laughs> yeah. Detective Pat got shot in the, in the lounge. And <laughs> cop was sleeping with his gun on his lap and he got spooked. He uh, woke up, the gun fell and hit. Somehow Detective Pat got shot in the lead. Yeah, in the legs, happen. he said, he, said he took happen. some lead. <laughs> was he going to sit on the plane? No gun allowed? What was that? Did you read that? Um, the incident on the plane. No, they, they, you you're armed when you go when you travel. Yeah, right? when we travel. Yeah, you get cash. permission to take your gun on Flying the plane. Flying well armed. Yes, yeah. I, I used to train that course. I used to teach that course. I knew everything about it. Flying well armed. <laughs> no, nothing now, but I knew every criteria that you needed to. Um, but uh, so where were we? Oh, with uh, Detective Pat. <laughs> yeah, you. So you took some. How'd you get shot? Somebody shot me. I know what happened. What was uh-huh. the? <laughs> This is this is this is a long Tell form. Tell us about the gunfight at the OK Corral. <laughs> this is a right, long well, form podcast. We have to kill time here. Right, well, well, <laughs> well, 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 the first time I was, the first time it happened when I f- first got involved, I was, um, I was on patrol in a six seven and uh, doing a four to twelve, and we would get a call, you know, had to run down to Central Book. So you weren't in the squad yet. No, no, I was on patrol. All right. And then we ran. We were running down to Central Booking to uh, to pick up some guys that were there all night and bring them back to the command. So, you shoot- mean cops that were there all night? Cops, right? Yeah. So we sh- were shooting down to um, we shooting down to Central Booking and down Rogers Avenue. We wind up on Myrtle Avenue. We're stopped in traffic and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. And there's there's a couple guys who were robbing a guy who has a gun, and they're all shooting at each other. One guy gets shot, and I'm like, well. You know, well, thinking about it later on, I'm like, you know, why didn't you wait till we left? You know, and, yeah. well, you know, but we're 20 yards from the police uh-huh. car, and they do they pull this stuff. So we're out. Um, we're out of the car. We're chasing. Oh, you my- mean you got out of the car? What's that? You didn't take off? No, no, yeah, no. I actually, <laughs> I did. You know, whatever. Boom. You did police work. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. You got out of the car. Wow, yeah. So amazing. my partner runs after one guy. I go after the other, and my, you know, the one guy runs to a parked car. And it, the car gets blocked by a retired cop, and my partner exchanges with him, and the perp takes off. I'm running after the other perp. Me and that perp throw, you know, around the two at each other. Mm-hmm. And as I'm like, with I'm, the revolver you got, with my trusty revolver, well, Smith and Wesson four. Yeah, the Smith and Wesson or Ruger. Smith. Okay. So I'm running down the street, and that's going on with the other guy, and the other guy's coming up behind me, and he's shooting, and the other guy's shooting, and boom, I get hit in the vest. I go down. Um, but I, I pop back, back, right back up uh-huh. and, um, and I let the guy have it. What did it feel like? You got hit in the head with a bat? In the um, back with a bat? 
Yeah, you know, but it was so quick. I mean, the force was like, it wasn't like, oh, oh you know, it was like, bang, you hit the ground. But I, I, like, I hit my knees, went down, I came back up, and like I said, I was Adrenaline. able to, uh, to um, defend myself and, you know, and take care of that guy. And uh, he's no longer with us. And mm. uh, the uh, other guy, the squad picked up uh, down the road, a couple of months down the road. He went out, you know, took off, and squad picked him up. Do you think about that ever? Um. Yeah, yeah. Not, not. I don't dwell on it. Right. Um. But I, th I think about it. You know, it was. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. Like the time, and then the next time it happened, and some other stuff. And I, I believe me, I'm not like a tough guy. Like, hey, you know, I, I'm a, like, you know, anything like that. But it just, it didn't really. I didn't dwell on it. Right. But the toll it took on, you know, guys I worked with that that saw it over there, or they were, you know, or my family. Um, were you married at the time? I was married, and you, you know what? Kids? I know I didn't have kids, but um, you know, a strange thing happened. Like two nights later, after that, I had just gone to bed. You know, I had been home, and um, you know, it was a lot. It was a lot in the news. It was in the papers, the shooting, and all that. And I'm lying in bed, and all of a sudden, the, uh, the front window, the, the uh, picture window, whatever, in the house explodes, and there's this giant piece of wood <laughs> playing in my living room with nails through it, saying, you know. You, you and your family are fucking dead, and all oh, this shit. other stuff. I hate when well, that happens. <laughs> so, so much for a night's sleep now, you know. So now I'm like, what the hell is this? And uh, called, the, you know, Nassau came, and then the squad came out from, from the city and that. And uh, it turns out it was a, a whole lot of nonsense. There was a telephone strike going on at the time, and the guy other, across the street from me was a... Uh, a scab or management that went to work. So it had nothing to and do they with going, the shooting. No, they were going around doing it to anybody that crossed the the, the picket lines or whatever. So, but still, it, oh yeah, that everybody. shook you up, I'm sure, right? You know, on the wife and everybody, and uh, yeah, my neighbor thought it was the funniest thing that ever happened. But um, you should have threw you it know. through his fucking window. Yeah, and see how yeah, funny yeah. it was. Right? Yeah. I got to tell you, man, <laughs> one of the scariest things that you think about when you're a cop is uh, probably getting involved in a shooting. And uh, I'm sure it's a horrible, horrible thing to go through, to, to actually go through a shooting. But you know what sucks just as bad? What's that? Not ever being in a shooting, and you have 20 years on and you retire. Because <laughs> now you go to parties and every single... Can't tell any more like, stories like that. <laughs> so that's the first question people ask me all the time. <laughs> oh, you retired? You were a cop? How long? 20 years. Were you ever... Did you ever shoot anybody? And like... No, nah, no. Nah. Man's got a nose people limitation. Just, people just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> he just became the most boring person yeah, in the room, man. <laughs> but I wouldn't give. You mean I had the vest on in the back? It hurt a little bit. Fuck it. Give me, give me that story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does come in. You know, well, you know, like I say, you talk about it now. It's just that you know, people. You, know, you start telling the stories. You're like, come on, you're full. You, this guy's full of shit. Uh -huh. No, no. Once, twice, three times. No, no. It's oh been, a, been a bunch of times. Did you, you reload know? with the speed loaders back then? No, I don't think we had them then. Yeah, would you, so you were doing the old... Was, I didn't reload. I you just, didn't reload. Uh, I, uh, I fired whatever, five rounds, I think, when that whole thing was I'm sure those enough. holes in the thirty eight must become like so small when you're trying to put those yeah. bullets in if you're in a shooting. Right? Yeah, no, I have I have reloaded once in another shootout. And uh, I did have the speed loader then, but those dump pouches I got... Oh, my pouch, God. You know, it probably would have never... Uh, What's the matter with the, the pouches? Well, before the speed loaders, you used to keep the loose rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like little uh, leather pouches, and then you take like them the, out. Like the Wild West. You know, and they, <laughs> they fall they fall. No, they the used to have the, like one one round per little thing, right? Is that what you're talking about? No, they were just little pouches. They were loose. The loose, yeah, loose, oh, loose, loose rounds. Little ra the yeah. loose rounds in a pouch yeah, yeah. instead of being yeah. in a speed loader. Right, right, right. And it wasn't wow, until... Uh, man. What was it? Bratton came in. He First, he was the chief of transit, and he gave them right. nines. Right, and right. And then... Cops were getting so outgunned. I think the big case that turned New York City to get nine millimeters was Scott Goodell. Right. Well, first the, we we got the speed loaders, from which that. were a joke, right? Well, they were better than the pouches. Yeah. And then uh, and then Transit first got gotten the nines. Right. And then eventually they had a pilot program where they gave them to anti crime because I was an anti crime. Remember they gave us nines. Right. Then they started the yeah started, they started everyone got nines because right. cops were so outgunned. Well, you right, were with yeah. your revolver for probably 10 years because, you know, well, I, I came on in 92 and then right, right uh, like I think 93 is when they started doing the switches. Everybody was yeah, switching over because when yeah, I first no. came on, I still had a revolver. I graduated with a revolver and then like six, eight, eight months later, maybe a year, they start, everybody started getting the semi-automatics. 
So you went almost 10 years, let's say, with your revolver. So by the time they were offering you the semi-automatic, you were already so used to the revolver. You were probably like... Uh, I'm I already got two bodies on this gun. <laughs> really, right? Switching. Why would you want to give it up? <laughs> why, would, why would you want to give is it Derek up? Derek Jeter going to give in his baseball glove <laughs> and got to buy a new one every week? Come on. When you're involved in that many shootouts, <laughs> at some point, do you like start doing like... Like this thing, and like, you know, to the back, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I did shoot the gun out of a guy's hand one time. No, wow. get which, out of which, here. Yeah, which was, uh, which was pretty, uh, I don't know how to say it. it wasn't fu- well, it was funny that you laugh about it. But yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. You know, Mike, one of the things too, were you then, aiming at the guy's hand? No, I was aiming at his head. Oh, well, that's but good. It, but, his, but the gun was in front of his face. Oh, he was yeah. That, running. Well, okay, he came out. He was just did a home invasion, was coming out of a backyard, and he. Uh-huh. Ran across, the, um, like, uh, with a, you know, like cars parked, like, at a 90-degree angle into uh-huh. the garage and that. Yeah, and he yeah. was, like, running along there, hiding, holding the gun up in front of his face. And Do boom, you remember the back then when they would say, like, if, you, if someone like you had two combat crosses, two medals of valor, and you, I think you had 200 department uh, citations, mm-hmm. they would say, oh, this guy's uh, violence-prone. Yeah. They yeah. said that, right? And it was About like, you. Oh, right, yeah, 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 no, they yeah. did that. And they wound up splitting me and my partner up. Uh, yeah, because you were getting point. involved in too much shit, yeah, right? Yeah, too effective. You, you would know, think so. that you know they what? would want a cop like you. Right? Can we go back to yeah. that story for one second? You said you were ru- the, the perp was running down the street after the home invasion shooting like over the cars like this, right? Well, they, what happened was uh, they were, these guys were doing a home invasion. They were a stick-up mm-hmm. team, you know, they were doing them all over Brooklyn, actually. And um, there was a kid. In the house, uh-huh. the guy owned, uh, the victim owned the key food. There was a kid in the house who was a paraplegic, oh. and he heard what was going on. He rolled under his bed and, and took the portable phone with him and called 911. Uh-huh. It's a very chilling uh, tape if you hear it. And wow. anyhow, these guys are running from room to room, pistol whipping people, tying them up, robbing the house. And they find the kid, and they drag him from under the bed, and they find the phone, and they hit the phone. It says redial, and 911 answers. So they bail out of the house. hmm and they were all wearing Halloween. It was Halloween night. Uh-huh. They were all wearing Halloween masks and 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 point to point radios and all this crazy That's... stuff. And we happened to be out. We had just picked up a guy with a gun like a twenty minutes before that. And when we got back to the squad, um, somebody calls nine one one says the police just arrested a guy and he robbed me last week. So we're going back up there to mm-hmm. try to talk to this person to see if we can, you know, we got a, you know, about the Complain, robbery. Yeah. And we happen to be right in front of the house now when the job comes over the radio. And uh, we jump out. You're right, out. Bill. He is prone. You know, <laughs> we jump out. He's and a these, magnet. These guys come out, and they start, you know, they open up on us. Three, uh, Four guys, and then three guys go one way, and one guy goes the other. I go after him. He comes out the side yard, and um, I shoot him. But the gun goes through the handle of, of, the, of the gun mm-hmm. and through his hand. Mm-hmm. And... The gun does one of these up in the air and lies on the Listen, ground. Listen, is, that is one probably one of the best <laughs> stories that I ever heard. But mm-hmm. you want to make it just a little bit better just for the party's sake? Sure. Put the paraplegic kid like as a hostage while the guy's <laughs> running through. And then you... Because that's... A, yeah. that, to me, then the story can get better. Yeah, well... That's with a pretty, the, that's a pretty the damn, legs flapping around that's like... That's a pretty damn good like story this. as it is. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and of course, uh, of course, he just got shot in the hand. He lived and they, they beat that case, believe it or not. Holy wow. shit! They beat the case, and uh, um, how is that even possible? But as you had lo- a nine one one call. Yeah, yeah, you know what? The, you know they wore masks. They had gloves. They did the thing, right. and, and and the gun. That even the guy with the guy shot in the hand with the whole, carrying yeah, the paraplegic. The, the gun he was carrying was taken in a home invasion a week before where they killed the guy. Wow! And uh, yeah, no, that was a failure by uh, well. Who wants to point fingers at this point? But go in ahead the and end, point, go ahead and point them. <laughs> All right, the DA's office, right? Uh, yeah. Well, did you, you know, sue the city? Him. Did he sue the city? The guy, the guy who got shot, falsely accused. No, no. But he, uh, they got released, and then he went right back to work. And I had the pleasure of about uh, a month after they, you know, a couple of months later, going to another home invasion, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a live one, and he was lying there dead. Oh wow. Um, he was well, like I said. He went right back to work. Although the homeowner, uh, <laughs> the homeowner was had a gun. I love that and, man. Uh, that, nothing makes me happy. So, Poetic justice. Oh, uh, street justice, man. When a homeowner blows away a home intruder, man, the happy juice that comes flying out of my heart. <laughs> but usually, yeah. the home invader people aren't innocent. They usually the homeowners are usually involved in the trade. Yeah, that's well, some, some most how, of them. But a lot of times yeah. with those uh, home invasions in the you know the bad neighborhoods and stuff like that. Those are also, yeah, it's a dirty house. So there's something yeah. going on in there. 
usually, but like the one where I got in the shooting, they that guy they were targeting business owners. They were, oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's horrible. Um, not not so much drug deals, but most of them are. Uh, there's baggage there with uh, the victims. Did Brooklyn know? have a home invasion task force too? Um, I heard no, the job did, but I never really met because Manhattan of had it because the Heights was like epidemic. For yeah, that, I think they know? call they call it J Rod or yeah, something like yeah. that. I I never. Dealt with any of those guys. Um, sounded like a great unit to be in. But yeah. um, well, they most you know. of the guys, they at least for the Heights, they had to speak Spanish because it was all uh, yeah, I'm sure, mostly right. Dominican right. stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they worked with the Feds on that. I think so. Joint, yeah, uh, yeah, robbery apprehension task force or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah, in the Heights, it was epidemic. I I'm was sure, wondering yeah. if Brooklyn was as bad back then. No, I mean I don't know what the numbers were, but. Um, you know, we, it was quite, you know, we did have quite a few of them. And they're very difficult to, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, the, the, the teams, the guys didn't know each other. They weren't right. like, you know, and believe me, most of these guys would have gave up their boys if they knew them. Sure. But they didn't know them. They met that day. You know? Right, they it come into like the a, country and they you know, make a score and they go back to where. Yeah, they come in for the day, they meet a guy. That's why we know. need a wall. <laughs> were, you, uh, uh, were you a good um, interrogator? I think so. I, you know, I had... Um, I had luck, you know, I mean, well, luck, you know, things went well. I think, um, you know, I mean, every case you want a confession, especially uh -huh. homicide cases, you know, and uh, I, 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 w I, did, I did well. I, I, you know, I could say I did well. What was your uh, thing? Were you good at schmoozing? Were you, did, because when it comes to interrogations, uh, I always uh, like to, you know, talk about, uh, there was, right here, brother. Right I got it, I got it. You know what it is, yeah, you, got the, you don't want to mess up the hair, I get it. <laughs> uh, whatever you have, you gotta take care of whatever you got left. You know? yeah, you got, I got hairspray. <laughs> I got it in the bag right there. Okay. <laughs> we'll hook it up for part two. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you know, a lot of times they, you know, most movies and stuff like that, they joke around about the good cop, bad cop. But there is a, a certain truth to that. There has to be one person that uh, is not going to be afraid to ask the serious questions. And usually, it's not the same exact person who's going to, you know, be giving them the cigarettes and the coffee and you want, let me know when you're hungry, guy. Yeah, you know, did you have so, a partner that you worked good with? Yeah, no, I had a, we, you know, in the homicide squad, we always work with the precinct squad guy, or mm -hmm. sometimes we go in with another homicide guy. And the guys I work with, guys on my team, we were all on the same page and stuff. Um, but I mean, my thing was, I would just sit down with a guy and just talk to him like like we're talking. Schmooze. You know? Yep. You know, I wouldn't try to be his bro, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a 50-year-old fat white guy. And, yeah, and you're, yeah. a, you're a 16-year-old kid from, from the projects. Yeah. You know, we're not the same, but again, that doesn't mean that I'm better than you. We talk. We, we you know, we talk, you know, and, and, you know, I don't need to be going with the whole lingo, hey, bro, you know, this, mm -hmm. that, and the, you know. Talk to him like a person, like a real person, which he is. That comes off and, fake anyway to me. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, like I'm a, like I said, I'm a fifty-something-year-old, you know, fat white guy. I'm, you're I'm you're be, you know, what the, I'm, you, I, I, they you envision, know. you know, in the game of good cop, bad. I mean, uh, uh, good guys and bad bad guys and stuff like that, and cops and robbers. In that game, there, there's the way the, the 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 bad guy looks, and there's a way that the cop looks. You know, right. you're supposed to. I think in their vision, you, you're supposed to look like you. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to. You're not supposed to be trying to. S schmooze them and, and, and when I say schmooze I mean talk their language and yo 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 and all that stuff no I mean I I, it, it did, I didn't I never really saw it work and you know what but again you still have to be the police yeah right. you gotta you gotta put forth that, that I, I'm I'm a, I'm a detective mm -hmm. and this is what but you know something like there's a million styles of interviewing right. no, everybody's and all got of them their work thing. and all of them work yeah no a depending lot of, you know, on but what tough, your style is the tough is. question is the tough part is asking him that question when you get to that point, and you basically ask him, "Did you do it?" Because you know that the next part after that, if they, you know, this person that you've gotten to know, even if it's a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You know they're gonna go through time. You know they're gonna go to prison. You know they're gonna be, yeah, they're well, screwed up. But they're screwed after this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that is, you know, because it's I not mean, easy. No, and you know what? And and again, like I said, when you say the word confession, it's not really a confession. Like I'm sorry. You get them once in a while, but it's more like. Uh, some sort of self-serving uh, right. uh, thing. Oh, uh, you know, I, I just had the knife in my hand. An admission more it, than a confession. You yeah. know, or oh, I had the gun. It was in my pocket. I pulled it out. I went by accident and hit three people in the head. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, there's usually self, they're, they're self-serving right. in that. But, but sometimes, you know, sometimes that helps you get the, get the admission. 
Yeah, you well, give I mean, them a way it, out, you know, it's, it's just another thing. You know, it's corroboration with right. eyewitnesses and, and any sure. physical evidence you may have. And if somebody's going to actually say, I was there and this happened. What do you think about now having to read Miranda right at the beginning of the interview? You know, they have to do that now. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, and, and most of the video, uh, most of the um, interviews now, from in, except from like Jump Street, they're all videotaped. Right. Um. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I understand you have to, re, re, you know, you know, if you have a suspect, you read them the Miranda, right? But, you know, you might want to say hello first, you know what I mean? It's like, who met a girl by saying, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Got to have something. Would you like, come home hey, with me? I, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. We're yeah. going to do this, we're going to do... No, hold on a second. Right. You know, how you doing? I'm detective But then you have to whatever. schmooze them before you get in the box. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't know how that's going over these days. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it's an issue because like I said, you know, because getting a waiver used to be a talent too. Right? Yeah. Well, the, th- the thing is too, I mean, you know, when you, the stuff you would be, you know, it's, it's basically telling somebody, Hey, Hey, stupid, get a lawyer and you can go home, yeah. <laughs> you know, just say, I want a lawyer and I can go home, right. you know, but, but, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, there's got to be some sort of introduction or whatever. They don't even want that. They don't even want a handshake. Hello, I'm detective so and so. This right. is my partner so and so. They don't even want that. They want boom, 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 Miranda right away. Right. And it just doesn't make any sense. I understand that you know you're not going to start an interrogation before that, but you might want to just you know. It sounds like they're loading the uh, the playing field in favor of the perp. Yeah, so well, is that something that's scripted? Actually, like you have to stick to that script. You're not allowed to introduce yourself first. You just have to. This so, is what so I, you know. I, I I caught the tail end of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know before I got out, but now, like I said, everything is is uh, videotaped. The, squ- the squad room's got t- videotape in it. Um, I'm just uh, I, I I know that, but I'm just curious. It, does the does it dictate that you're not supposed to introduce yourself? Is there somewhere that it's written or? You know, once the tape is on, you have to start. Your opening words have to be with Miranda. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that, 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 that's, that's how I understood it. But like again, I never really dealt with that. <coughs> I was gone, thankfully, by all that. Not that anything went on that wasn't supposed to. But you know, it, it's the real world, and there's ways. You know, as things happen. You know, and and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, well, you, you, you got to make it tougher know? for the guys because they're getting they're closing too many cases out. I guess right. Whatever yeah, we can well, do to make it tougher. Yeah. I must think, I think it must be much tougher to get someone to wave when it's on camera and right out of the box, there's no schmoozing. I would say it must be much tougher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see that. I mean, it just, and it, like I said, it just doesn't make sense. It just wouldn't make sense to go into that right away. Right. You know, um, but and sometimes it would, sometimes it would be that, you know, every case is different. You right. don't know. It depends on the demeanor of the person, you know. You got to think. You might have had to hunt some. You might have to go down to Texas and put some guy in a plane and bring him back, you know, and, and or, or chase a guy down the street or drag him out of a from under his bed and, right. and 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 actually fight with the guy to get him cuffed and get him back. And now you're going to read Miranda right away. You know, sometimes you might want to go uh, do something else for a little bit and you know have him sitting, you Let know, sitting cool in his heels for a, for a while. Bit, yeah, you know. And now everybody's all about times. Well, well TV, you TV always, you know, I, I cringe in Law and Order and SVU when right on the scene. You have the right to remain silent. Like, where the fuck did they get that from? Yeah. Don't they right. have, like, advisors? <laughs> no. You know? no. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, no. it's for television. It's, you know, it's more interesting. It's the same way that the detective goes through the door first. Yeah, right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? It's like... Everybody the else is there with with you know bazookas. Full body, <laughs> you know everybody's got the, yeah. the the helmets on. The they got the shields, right, the vests. Right. You know they got the big guns out. And he, but the Marisco detective Hargate is going through the door first. <laughs> <laughs> She's leading the way, leading from the front. God bless her. That's I, a real detective. Yeah, I forget. Right where, I forget where we were. We were going to door door like a hit on the door. You know, and guys came. We were actually. In, Pennsylvania, and they brought like a like a little tactical uh, team with them. You know, you guys got your uh, tactical gear, and I look, <laughs> <laughs> pull up, pull up my uh, pant leg. I got my chief on my ankle. Right, right, five said, shot yeah, revolver. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Let's go. <laughs> I was just reading so. a story. <clears throat> they made a collar somewhere up, up yesterday or the day before upstate in the woods, and um, was it you that I was reading the story about? I think right. I was doing my homework on you. Didn't you go upstate for a case, and then you were in your uh, the, the the shoes? That's what you're talking about right now, right? 
No, no. You I had to go know. look for a perp somewhere, and you it was in. Uh, I think it was in the Poconos. Oh right, that was that was the uh, that was the guy. You who see that? I them. do do my homework. See that? Right. I just forget that I do it. Yeah, that was the guys <laughs> who uh, killed uh, Officer Tomashenko. In the yeah, yeah. Tell us right. about that. Um, well, after after the you know the shooting happens. You know, well, for the you know just we we have fans that like you know it could be way younger just getting on okay. the job. Also, fan, you know, fans from other um, from around the country, some around the other countries. So okay. they might not be familiar. Officer uh, Tomachenko was a police officer who got killed in the line of duty. Yes, along with another officer, right? Who didn't get didn't get shot? Okay, it, it was over a car. It stop, is part right? of the return fire. Yeah, they they pulled over a car um, mm-hmm. in in the seven one on a late tour, and these guys you know were uh, strapped up and um, they had a stolen car, and they came out shooting and there was an exchange and Officer Tomachenko was shot and killed. Um, short, you know, long story short, the perps were identified and, uh, they took off on, on the, Mike, uh, could you say, I think there was some really good forensic work done on that case too, wasn't it? Cause I, what I heard was they were able to recover DNA from the chicken they were eating inside yes, the car yeah. and they also lifted DNA off the trigger guard of one of the guns in the yeah. car. Tremendous, tremendous police work. Especially mm-hmm. when you got more than one person's dna on one chicken bone <laughs> no seriously uh-huh. yeah no that's I'm not interesting kidding. yeah so it's a shame. Oh, but that's great police work right oh See? yeah no it was the, the uh the criminologist i guess her title would be did with the great work on the job and we had the guys identified that's but, why i tell you bill all um, the time you have your chicken wing i have mine we don't have to keep splitting them <laughs> no but um yeah so anyhow the chase was on we were all over the place looking from and um we had gotten uh well, I don't know if you call it a tip. A member of the service came forward and says, I, I know where these guys are. They were at my brother's house last night. My brother drove them somewhere. What? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. A member of the service? Yeah. From yeah. our job? From our job. Had a friend. His brother. No, his brother. Oh, his brother was one of the perps? No, no, his brother was, I guess, friends with the perps. They came. He says, oh, these guys came to my brother's house, and my brother drove them somewhere. Wow. And you didn't find that out till the next day? No, we found that out long time, like not a, you know. Oh, so he didn't week. tell, he didn't no, give no. it up right away. Yeah, no, I love that. No, I love that know. too. Good. So job. we were, we were a day or two behind yeah. all this, and we went out. The brother was uh, out on Long Island. And what do you think about up. applicant investigation and hiring that guy? Well, you know, they wanted to give him a medal, a job for coming forward and helping. Yeah, out yeah, him. give him a medal. But um, anyhow, we wound up. Oh, I dropped him off in Pennsylvania, and. What's the next thing we do? We're running guys, you know, any, any guys he was in the joint with, you know, family, anybody. What's he doing in Pennsylvania? And uh, we went out there, and we had a whole wave of guys. Um, what do they call themselves? The Manhunters. Those guys were out there and running around and banging <laughs> outdoors and everything else. Maybe, Scaring maybe, the hell out of it. It was like a real you talk, town there, you know. Yeah, you're you talking about civilians it. that uh, joined no, the No, no, the, the job. The, the, the guys that are on TV and that stuff, uh, I forget who they are. Um, the Fugitive Task Force. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. All right. The, the man on this. So, All right. So the Fugitive Task Force is up so, there. Anyhow, we're up there. We're banging around, and it's not going. I mean, what are we doing? We're looking at people's camps and stuff. It's, mm-hmm. You know, it's a rural area. It's like in the woods. It's not like a town even. There's a couple small towns nearby, but... How know, long were you up there? Um, a couple of days. And then, uh, actually, the locals were, were pushing. Listen, we got to put this out there. We're scaring the hell out of the town. Mm-hmm. You know, but of course, Big Blue, oh, we do it our way, you know, yeah, we got yeah. all this, that, but, you know, we wind up, me and a couple of guys wind up convincing one of our bosses, Don't forget about the palace for a minute, we got to put, these guys live here, you mm-hmm. know, they know the neighborhood, the town, put it out there, put it out, out in public while we're here, why the mm-hmm. police are banging on everybody's door and let everybody know. It's not like, you know, if they're here, we'll, we'll get them. All right, mm-hmm. fair enough. So, within 10 minutes of that, the boy, you know, our one captain went and did that. We get a call, mm-hmm. and it sounds kind of far fetched, but you know, they're walking down like I eighty in the median. Oh, sh- you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know, so we jump in the car, mm-hmm. me, the captain, and another guy I work with, two troopers from Pennsylvania, and off we go. And there, they, there these two dopes are walking in a, in a pouring rain uh, wow. down the median, carrying crackers and and, and peanut butter and uh, and everything else. And um, 
As soon as we get close, they, they didn't last long at all. Those guys, no, nah, and they, you know, they well, it literally went from being harbored. Uh, somebody was taking care of them to giving up five minutes. Well, later. they didn't give up. They took off into the woods. Oh, but I'm, I, you're walking in the middle of the highway for a, a significant amount of time, right? And, you know, in a town that they were already kicking down doors. You probably yeah. heard, yeah. They, they were they were sick of being on the run. Let's just put it that way. Well, they did. Well, they ran a little bit. It wasn't like a median like we see here. Uh-huh. It was like a median. It's like woods, you know. It's uh-huh. like big. But we got the we grabbed the one guy, and then uh, everybody got stand down, stand down. The other guy was nearby. We, mm-hmm. we you know, but you know, we waited for some more guys to clear it out, and then you know the big boys came and says, "Oh, we got it from here." And then uh, we took our perp, and then who's the big they, boys? The FBI? Fugitive Task Force. No, it wasn't, it wasn't even them. It was uh, one of the, uh, the, the Fugitive Enforcement Division of our job. Oh, okay. Okay. It was it dog? It wasn't dog, was it? No. He, <laughs> he, but I think this guy dog watched. The I think the guy watched. You watched dog, dog get that big later. mace canister? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, you guys leave. Do, uh, <laughs> we got it from here, and then, you know. I used to while. work in the Warren Squad. I mean, mm-hmm. I wasn't in the Fugitive Task Force, but I, there was one guy, um, and he used to wear the... Uh, it was like a hunting vest, you know? Oh, yeah. And then it had all these different pockets, and you might as well have just been had, like, buckshots going like around it, because that's, the, that's the vision or? that I had in my head. And, you know, he had a, a regular, uh, you know, Glock, but he might as well just had the shotgun over his yeah. shoulder. But on, on his desk, it used to read, um, he used to read a, a thing by Edgar Allan Poe, and it was just like, once you hunt humans... Oh, well, that's, that's Hemingway. 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 Oh, uh, yeah, Hemingway. yeah, Hemingway. <laughs> once you hunt humans, you'll never be able to hunt an animal right. again. And yeah. uh, I just thought that was interesting because he was, you know, the guy... It, we've, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, no, I, I, maybe I'm, it's, it's out of jealousy because, I, I mean, you know, whatever. But like I said, we grabbed the one guy. All right, we got it from here, and the next thing you know... You know, the next day. Now, did you grab the, the main guy. shooter? Yeah, no, we grabbed the guy. And then, okay, we, you know, the, they, we clear out. We got it from here. And the next thing you know, they pick up the other guy. I'm like, the guy's right. He's here. I saw him. Uh-huh. He disappeared. He's got to be laying down under a bush, a tree right. or something. And uh, next thing you know, we got a call that they got the other guy. And then, you know, that was all in all the papers how they caught him and uh, how they did this. And they took all the credit and, got, <laughs> you know. And this is on, on, on a dead police officer. Yeah, yeah, you know that's I mean? ridiculous. So after yeah. that, I, I, you know, listen, but I, you know, I wasn't looking for any credit. It was one of my shining moments in the police department. You know, it's but funny, yeah, but maybe the between. paper has something to do with that because the Fugitive Apprehension Task Force sounds like, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like somebody who's wanted should be worried about them. You yeah. Say, you know, yeah, yeah, sure, uh, but, you, know. you know, just you know, it's something to write about. But whatever, I mean, we know what we, we know what he did, you know, and I yeah. know what I did. Now, like I said, it was my, you know, it was, uh, and I know because my sons were little at the time, and the first thing I did when I grabbed the guy, I called my sons. Mm-hmm. I said, I got this guy. That's you great. Know? And and, um, and um, the reason why the story uh, caught my eye was because, well, what did you do How, wh- when you took this guy under, when you collared him? Right. Who's cu- whose cuffs did you use? We used uh, Officer Tomashenko's cuffs. That's uh, that's great. Did he give it up? Um, I'm not sure. It wasn't my case. Um, I don't know how the interviews uh, went. Um, you know, afterwards, when not only that guy but the other the other subjects, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I don't remember exactly how it went. Um, you know, Mike, it's uh, interesting what you said about like the Puzzle Palace runs the case. Down from down there, and the puzzle I, palace. I you mean one one police one plaza, police well, plaza right. police, our headquarters, the police commissioner, or the yeah. chief of detectives. And sometimes they don't listen to the detectives, and that always blew me away. Like the detectives are telling you this, and you're doing that. You know? Yeah, I don't and understand. And you try to tell your bosses why? Are they, why is he telling us to do this? The detectives all think it's this. Well, right? I, I used to ask my friends, the guys I know that were in a bomb squad. I said, "Hey, yeah." Uh, does anybody ever tell you what wire to cut? <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Because everybody tells said, me. Cut the red one. You know, listen, hey, boss, I know how to beat a confession out of a guy. Just take it easy. I'll, I'll, be, in, I'll be out in a little bit, you know? Uh-huh. I mean, but they'll tell you what to do when a lot of guys didn't have. Listen, I worked with some fantastic bosses, great guys, you know, guys that were detectives or even if they weren't, they got it. They, they were really good guys. Right. But there were those guys that just, uh, they just didn't get it. And, um, you know, would cause problems and would compromise cases in the end too. You know. Yeah. Um, well, so. we are at the uh, end of the first hour. We have a, a. Tell me, you got more cases to talk about? 
Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, you got any more shootings? Well, we got three more. <laughs> I might have a couple. We got three more shootings. <laughs> we, we only covered two. We got three more to go. Three more shootings. One more Mel of Valor. <laughs> and uh, this was, did you have a good time? Yeah, it's great. It's fun. All right, good. We're going to come back for another hour. Before we go, uh, I just wanted to make an announcement where we could put it at the top at the bottom. A any closing words, Bill? Yeah, I just, uh, uh, Mike's nickname is The General. Because they, th he has a big rack and like a general, uh -huh. so they uh -huh. named him the general. I just thought he'd throw that out there. That's cool, yes, man. Yes. You have a picture with you with the rack? Maybe uh, we can add that to not the on me. <laughs> no, not on you, but <laughs> come on, you're supposed to carry that in bars, can, especially. Can you, can, hey. can you email us once just so we can put it up? A email? You mean on a computer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. He's still maybe I could. Maybe I could come to your house and photo scan it. Yeah, no, I'll mail it. I'll mail you one. I'll make. Grab it out of the photo you. album <laughs> and put it on. Ask your kids to put it on their scanner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say something in parting. Um, my friend Angelo uh, Lozada passed away a couple of weeks ago, and then he had a memorial. Uh, he was a great comedian. He opened for Trevor Noah on the uh, the uh, Daily Show on Comedy Central, and many, many people loved him. His memorial was something that I'll never, ever forget. It was at the Gotham Comedy Club. Um, the Mazzilli brothers, uh, Chris Mazzilli, who owns the club, and his brother Steve, they, they really went out of their way to put together the most beautiful thing that I've ever been part of. Uh, broke my heart, and... Um, and also, I, I never laughed and cried so much within the same two hours of my life. It was just amazing. And one of the first performers, they had performers come um, and, and say stuff on stage. And one of the first performers, and he sang a song, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing, was this guy, Flaco Nabaja. And I just had a feeling that Angelo put us two together because I, I loved what he did for Angelo so much that something came over me. I said, let me just reach out to him. I found him on Facebook, and I told him how much what I thought of his performance, and he invited me to come to his show. It's a solo show, and it's at the uh, Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. It's called The Evolution of a uh, Sonero, and a Sonero is uh, a salsa singer, and it's a great, great show. He's a great singer. He's a poet. He's an actor, and he's also very funny, too, and the show is fantastic. So if you want to go see something good, folks, check out uh, Flaco Navaja, man. And uh, we'll be back for the second hour shortly. Thank you.